What's up, y'all? I'm Jules Jensen here at Shabby Road, and today I'm excited because I'm going to be unboxing and testing something that I've wanted to try for a while, and the time finally has come, and it's here. And that thing is a low boy custom beater from Colorado, custom kick drum beater. I've been seeing these around, I've seen a lot of players that I really like their tone using them, uh, seen some in the flesh, but never actually really played one, and definitely haven't tested one in a studio-like environment, <laughs> as close to that as we can get here at Shabby Road. So I'm going to check it out, check uh, the weight, and then we'll be comparing it with a couple different drums, same microphone, uh, same mix down on both drums, and then a being it with a Tama Iron Cobra felt beater, which is what I've been using for a long time. I really like the weight of that. Beater, the Tama, I really like the weight of the Tama beaters, and uh, the tone, it's funny, this company brings to attention the fact that the tone of and generated by a kick drum beater isn't always looked at. I think obviously there's different ones, and people know that there's different things you can, different effects you can achieve with different beaters, but these guys are using different kind of materials and really putting an emphasis on the difference it makes when you give the same attention to detail that we're seeing in cymbals and drums themselves down to the hardware. Now we're seeing that. So I went with the lightweight Leather Daddy, aptly named, and that's because it's got a leather surface which makes contact with the drum as opposed to felt like we see on the Iron Cobra. This one's a little used, slightly worn down, but... Um, you know, close enough in weight to get an idea. And I will say, holding them both, the Iron Cobra is definitely heavier. Not by much, but it is. You can feel heavier in the top. I'm curious to see how that feels in comparison. Maybe I'll have to put a little weight right under this one just to bring it up to that same feel. But maybe the lighter feel will work. But pretty similar. And obviously it looks really cool and good. It's, this one has been... Uh, burned and stained in a way that gives it a kind of rustic look. Um, this was just one they had. I didn't customize this, although you can customize many different components of these on their website, but this was one they just had available that met the specs I was looking for, lightweight with the leather head. So um, we're going to test both of these head to head, no pun intended, and or maybe it was. And uh, we're going to do those on two different drums, but we're going to use the same mic, the same mixing path and everything. So pretty much the only difference will be the beater itself. And we'll try to hear uh, what kind of differences they have. I'm curious to see how the feel and the tone of this leather beater is. So this is a low boy, lightweight, leather daddy beater uh, versus in a friendly competition, a Tama, Tama Iron Cobra felt beater. So... Let's see what we got here. All right, so we did an A-B test there with the Tama, Tama, Tame, however you want to say it, Iron Cobra felt beater versus the new low boy lightweight leather daddy beater. Initial reaction after playing it and then listening back. Play-wise, it's definitely a little lighter, but doesn't feel like there's nothing there compared to the Iron Cobra beater. It definitely 
has enough bulk that it feels pretty comparable and maybe just gives you that little advantage in lighter weight speed, but still all the mechanics anyone who's been playing with one of the Iron Cobra beaters has developed over the years aren't going to be null and void or thrown off totally because of the weight difference. Um, also, the just the general feel of it on the drum, it feels wider, it feels bigger, it feels like it's kind of absorbing the shock in a different way, if that makes sense. It's kind of more brittle, but in a good way, in that it doesn't feel too puffy. It really has like a nice attack, a nice transient there that feels really good when you're playing it, but still has a responsivity and bounce back of the felt as well. Um, so that feels really good and felt nice uh, speed-wise and just general what it was giving back to me depending on the dynamics that I was putting into it, so that was cool. Recording-wise, it uh, it definitely sounds way better. There's no question about that. In my mind, it's more present. You're getting way more of a transient attack, especially when mixing drums. That's huge to really be able to see that point and see that moment to line things up and make sure it all is uh, in phase and whatnot. So it's nice to just have that more pronounced and more prominent just at the, you know, the baseline entry level of where the sound starts is cool. And, uh, yeah, just more more punchy, a little clickier. I think, you know, the leather version of this low boy beater versus a felt version are obviously going to sound different. So felt versus felt would be cool. Low boy, if you guys want to send me a felt lightweight beater to do that test, uh, I'd be happy to make another video. But either way, it just, you know, has more presence, more attack, and just sounds more mixed right out of the box, kind of more like the prog stuff or metally kind of clickier click kick drums, but without like the full-on wood beater clicky kick drum sound. Still has warmth and punch, but it's just bringing that out more. So cool when, you know, the gear you're playing starts mixing itself before you ever even record it. That's always a good feeling. So um, I'm definitely going to try these two on a different drum, and we'll check in with that. So... We'll see you in a minute when we get the other drum out. All right, we're back. We tested both beaters on two different kicks. And as I said in the intro, I'm going to be using the same exact gain level, mic, compression, EQing um, on both beaters. Each kick may be EQed differently per kick, but it'll be the same settings other than the beater. Will be the only, that will be the only variable. The same characteristics I felt carried over from the, you know, both drums. Obviously, both drums are different, but the... The difference between the two on both drums was clear, even though I had a different effect on each one. It was prominent that the low boy had more attack, more punch, and just really was getting those transients across better than the felt beater, but still felt good and had the right articulation and still had dynamics. So I, I, I really like it. I'm excited to get a second one and try them on a double kick pedal, so I'll definitely put that up when I try that. And uh, it was cool. I didn't realize at first there was a, a nice little magnet and a sticker. Magnet's a good look. You don't always get a magnet. A lot of stickers out there, but cool to have a little swag in there as well. And, uh, yeah, overall, definitely eye-opening to try this thing. I've been wanting to try a low boy beater for a while. Um, I'd love to try different ones. <laughs> if you're hearing me, low boy. But it does... Uh, it's not hype. It's not just hype. It makes a difference. It feels different. And hopefully you saw from the demo, it sounds different. And it's a sound I think is going to translate better in my studio over the things that I'm doing to get that attack. And the difference that it makes is beneficial to the sound I'm going for. So hopefully you guys can try one yourself. 
Tell me what you think. Tell me what you thought about the different beaters and the different drums in the comment section. And please be sure to like and subscribe if you're digging what you see here. All right. Thank you so much. I'm Jules Jensen here at Shabby Road. See you soon.